Hello and welcome back. And today we've got something a little bit special. It's more of a sneak peek. We're going to call it a hardware review because we are going to talk about the hardware, but I'm going to be completely upfront. There isn't going to be a performance testing of this, the new Flash server from QNAP, the TSH2490FU. Now, grow up. I know I said FU there, but come on, we're all adults. Now, this is their brand new 24 bay flash device it takes advantage of nvme three times four u2s and in fact we can have a look inside we've got it populated right here with wd sn6400 drives the reason it's populated is we will be doing some performance benchmarks with this device very very soon however i'm not able to do it today and rather than have you guys wait until the new year 2021 well done with that. How was your Christmas? Rather than you guys have to wait for that, I thought we'd get some good looking, uh, good looks at this device and a lot of the hardware around it. And therefore, when we do the performance benchmarks later, we can get a bigger, broader picture. I know, lovely, right? But let's talk about this device arriving at about uh, 6,700, 6,800, and that is uh, using the 8-core processor. There is another version of this, and there are different configurations that go much higher. I think about 8, 9, probably even close to 10 grand on this device. It has got a couple of different CPU combinations. It does arrive in an enormous box, so we're not calling this an unboxing because the box is almost as big as the screen you're looking at. And this device has got some insane level hardware inside. Now... In terms of NASs that we featured on the channel before, I mean, the race is over. This is the fastest inside and out NAS we've ever mentioned on the channel. But one of the earliest things I noticed about it when we first got it here and out of the box, and it's something I think is very hard to display in other parts of this video, it's not even full depth. Remember that later on in the video when we carry on talking about it. It's not full depth. Okay, now... The front of the device, as you can imagine, is a rack mount device. This isn't going to be the sort of thing that you're going to be able to contain in a desktop chassis. It takes advantage of an AMD-based processor, the EPYC. And I want to make sure I get this right with a lot of the, the uh, specifications of that CPU. So I do have my notes off screen. Um, you can go for the 8-core model, which is the C302P. It's a 3.1 to 3.2 gigahertz 8-core processor there. And uh, there is a greater 16-core version, and that is the 7232P, a 3.0 to 3.3 gigahertz CPU. Now, this CPU arrives, we've uh, checked it for recording, 128 lanes of PCIe 4, and it does take advantage of them. Now, inside this device, as mentioned, you've got all these lovely bays right here. Now, for those that aren't aware, you two... UT is um, arguably a, um, a PCIe uh, connection there on the rear, comparable to proprietary SAS. And if we have a look at it there, we've got that connection. And again, you don't have to fully populate this device, but arguably companies that are looking to invest in a solution like this, as big as that number is, and this does correspond to a lot of conversations we've had before recording, this device, the price tag that it arrives with is quite minimal compared to the cost of populating this device. The average cost of U2 NVMe drives of this height and quality and performance massively overshadows the cost of the device itself. So bear that in mind when you look at that price tag. It also arrives with a DDR4 ECC memory, 16 slots, mental. Um, and that um, it arrives with 64, I believe it was up to 128 gig configuration as a base model. There's a 64 gig as well, but I believe that memory, of course, goes a great deal higher than that. Hopefully the notes on screen would have indicated so. Um, it also arrives with improved network interfaces on the rear that we're going to talk about in a little bit. And of course, being rack mount related, we have got these little handles here. I don't know if it arrives with the rails by default. This is a test sample unit. So always check with whoever you buy with whether it's got the rails as well, because I do think this is the sort of device where sliding rails are going to be paramount. I don't care if you're rack cabinets on wheels this is a heavy beast it's going to be a lot easier otherwise take advantage of it take advantage in that way now if we look at the rear of this device we're going to get this up the camera this has got some weight to it we can have a look at those ports and connections and we're going to see what happens first am i going to run out of steam or am i going to drop this on the floor now we'll have a look at those connections and take a good look at what we get for you know six to ten grand these days now we've got a couple of psus here on the side and there's a redundant psu option here but it is of course worth highlighting again with redundant psus 
that really you're only going to use the one that's there. So if one of your PSUs fails, your connected users, your shares, you know, all of your VMs, that sort of thing, they don't notice. Only the admins get a notification that one of your PSUs may have failed. And bear in mind that in most devices, the PSU is probably the second most frail thing outside the media. But in the case of this, using NVMe SSDs, I tell the PSU is probably more of a concern than anything else, and that even then that concern isn't particularly large. You know, each one of these PSUs that is covered by the five-year warranty um, is 1,100 watts. So you've got two of them in there, but you can't combine them. That is your limitation. Now, a number of you, myself included, I might add, would wonder why you'd need that much power for this device. But you have to bear in mind, this is NVMe. SSDs here at the front, all of them are PCIe Gen 3 times 4 each. That's already a big power draw. You've got an amorphous um, CPU inside there, and then you've got the network interfaces here on the side. If you have a look, we have two uh, dual port 25 GBE cards inside here. Now, the the device that runs with the eight port car, uh, the eight port CPU, that one's only got the one card inside. So do bear in mind that that does factor into the price if you go for the eight core model. But each one of those ports is 25 GBE. It's got uh, internal controller there, and we can see that on screen. Uh, the chipset. There are two floating around there on the manufacturer's page there. So rather than point one out, they should both be there for you to see. And of course, link aggregation is supported with a potential 100 GBE combined throughput possible on this. And that is when this kind of media really gets to shine. Because let's face it, in this device, the media is not going to be a bottleneck in most regard. The amount of performance, the thousands of meg, each one of those individual drives are going to throw your way, even outside of a RAID, become you know, insane later down the line. You are talking read writes here. We're talking 10,000 and above. And of course, the IOPS there to match, I believe, read IOPS uh, close to 250,000 as well. Um, now, the device alongside those connections, we have two hilariously bog standard uh, USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports there. And again, for those that aren't up on the ever changing USB um, naming culture, that just means five gigabits per second each. But bear in mind, those ports at this point, they're UPSs and connected maintenance devices. You're not going to be using it as an expansion port, certainly, because those ports are just not going to give you the throughput that that media deserves. Maybe, I'm not 100% certain if there is a QNAP expansion currently out for this, or this device is newer than any expansion. So it'll be interesting to see where they go forward on this. Alongside that, we have a couple of onboard uh, LAN ports there, which again are 2.5 GBE, which in this context is comical, but for maintenance purposes, that's still better than nothing. And it's good they didn't just cop out on a 1 GBE regardless, but realistically, they are still just typical um, CAT 2.5. Um, now, you can see PCIe lanes so there. There's actually five. Obviously, these two are pre-populated, but all of them are PCIe Gen 4. And we have a combination of Gen uh, 4 times four and gen four times eight here but just bear in mind that the best slots are already taken here and the combination of cards you use will affect the throughput of those individual connections now what we're going to do is we're going to get the lid here off the top we have got the screws here on the back we've got these nice thumb screws so we can take a good look inside this device and i'll be honest this is me looking wussy on camera because i think i am going to need a screwdriver there you go let's have a look inside there Put that out we can have a good look at this cpu now i'm imagining this device is going to have quite an impressive cooling system internally because that kind of storage media and this kind of performance is going to generate all manner of heat and of course the cpu is almost certainly going to have a heat sink but is it going to be a case of as we've seen on say the 88x series where that cpu has been quite um here we go we'll get that out of there and it's a slide design actually have a look at that controller with that i'm sorry that's getting picked up on the mic guys slide that out we can have a good look at the internals of this device so here we go there are all those lanes inside of all of those memory slots there and they're one in one out right now during the half population of those bays inside we have that enormous uh, metal mixture heat sink there we even got copper piping as well which is great to see on this device and that tremendously active cooling there working through the device drawing air 
all over that. And if we have a look down here, we have got those PCIe lanes exposed there, so we can get a good idea about the times four and times eight slot. And of course, at the top there, I believe that is a time 16 slot that we've got cheekily hiding there at the top, populated by one of those big old cards. Now, bear in mind, you're gonna have to, have to, have to make sure that in your own network environment, you are using greater than ethernet connections. Yes, of course, the internal to this device, a lot of the performance benchmarks and the performance this thing chucks out are for those internal databases, but to be able to interact with it at speed with low latency, high performance, bear in mind, you're gonna to have to upgrade your internal uh, series of connections as well. There is um, a degree of backwards compatibility with those SFP ports there, but it is gonna depend on those transceivers that you have inside, so bear that in mind. Now, what is it? that Kinapa bring into the table in terms of software on this device. Well, of course, we are seeing ZFS make its um, way here. We have got QUTS Hero inside this with all the benefits of data in line, compression and deduplication, but there's also very much SSD targeted stuff with this device with um, SSD antiware QSAL, which I believe should be launched now when we first talked about this device, it hadn't quite reached fruition. And then of course, the added benefits that ZFS brings to the table by the removal of that volume layer so the raid building, raid rebuilding, resilving, that sort of thing, all lovely and quick. And of course, a configurable and monitorable raid system on this is going to be paramount because SSDs, for all of the goodness, for all of the performance, for all of the reasons that we love them, it has to be said that they do wear away and you will need to replace them and you need a system that will monitor them and make sure that when they do need replacement, that it's done effectively without a lot of data or downtime. Now, we will be doing those performance overviews with this. We're hopefully gonna have a few 25 GBE cards running at the same time so we can really see what we can get out of this and those lovely WD Gold drives inside. Again, cheers to WD for supplying those drives. Appreciate it because I have nothing here in the studio that would do the job inside this device. So really grateful for that. And I hope you guys are looking forward to that too. But we're gonna wrap things up here. Do check out in the description, there should be a link to the hardware review where we take a lot more closer look at this hardware, which of course be updated with a lot of the performance benchmarks later on as we continue. But thank you so much for watching. Hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I'm sorry it's more of a flighty video for this, but this thing is going to speak volumes in the testing more than it's going to do to look at. It's not a device that's going to be nice to look at. This is a device that can stand on its own two feet in performance, and that's where we want it to live. So do check that out with the performance benchmarks then. I'll see you next time. Click like if you've enjoyed it. Click subscribe to learn more. Visit the links in the description. And cheerio.